Hi, I'm Rob Johnston. In this video, we're going to do a quick overview of the new QServer 2. QServer is a unique lighting control processor that's great for all kinds of architectural and entertainment lighting projects. It's completely self-contained and entirely customizable for your needs. It's great at replaying scenes like a traditional lighting console, but it also has a great feature of doing streaming, record, and playback so you can control massive amount of fixtures very easily. Or it can control classic architectural lighting, like that used for ballrooms, convention centers, or even residential projects. It's been designed to scale from the simplest of projects up to really complex control scenarios using sophisticated scripting and event building. QServer 2 is entirely Ethernet based. It uses the latest in lighting control protocols and can output a massive 16,000 channels of control. It operates with our existing line of button stations, LCD touchscreens, it'll do iPad and iPhone apps, it even talks to Crestron and all kinds of other third party devices. QServer 2 even has audio output, so it's great for being able to include sound effects or even music clips along with your cues. While QServer 1 was all web-based, QServer 2 has a brand new native application called QServer Studio that runs on both Mac and Windows computers. Let's take a look at it now. When the application opens, you'll first see a window that shows QServers you have on your local network. I have three of them showing here. You can also add remote QServers to this window, and you can work with offline project files. Clicking into a QServer opens its editor window. It's kind of organized like iTunes, with a list of views down the left-hand side. The top section of views are for live views of the QServer hardware. The stage view shows the DMX output from the device. As you can see, it's happily crossfading between a few scenes. The playback view shows the device's playback layers and any activity that's going on. There's also a view that shows what's going on on the device's front panel. I'll go back to the stage view. At the bottom of the window is a command line that allows you to run interactive QScript commands on the QServer at any time. I'll type playback3 group1 at 75, and we can see the QServer fade up the channels in group1. In the resources section, we have several types of show data that you can add to your project. Queues store various lighting scenes. QServer also allows you to define groups, macros. You can add audio clips to your project and add custom web pages for the QServer as well. If I click into a queue, you'll see all kinds of parameters for the queue, including the timing that it uses when the scene appears, options for playing back streams, what's recorded in each queue, and more. I can open multiple windows so I can edit the show while I'm watching the results. Let's run Q30 and playback 1. You can see it's a stream that's almost 10 seconds long. I'll go down to my command line and type playback 1 Q30. That will prepare this queue to run next. You'll see the stream run here on playback 1. And because the queue also triggers an audio clip, you'll hear some music too. And go. Now that's really cool. The trigger section is where you set up button stations, timers, and more. For instance, I can go into the definition of a button on my QServer and change how it behaves. All throughout QServer 2, we use the concept of rules. For this button, I add a rule that tells the button what to do when I press it. Whenever this button is pressed, then perform script, and then I'll add an action like Q1 Go. But maybe I want something more complicated, and so I'll add some more logic by clicking on these conditionals. Now it's whenever this button is pressed and it's dark outside. Or contact 7 is closed. I can continue to add more rules, conditions, and actions to get the button to act however I'd like. Timers in QServer 2 are pretty sophisticated too. I add a timer and tell it when I'd like it to trigger. First, I'll change its name. Then I'll pick a time for the timer to fire. And I'll add an action like playback 3, Q101, go. I'll change the timer to trigger at sunset with an offset of 5 minutes. 
I'd like this timer to have separate on and off times. Let's have it turn off at 2 a.m. with the command playback3 clear. Right now this timer is triggering every day. I can further specify which days this timer will fire. Let's pick only the even numbered months. Or go for just the second quarter. Or only November. How about just weekdays in November? Or let's narrow it down to just Thursday. Specifically the last Thursday of November. And just for kicks, we just want to do this on odd numbered years. These timers are hugely flexible. There's also a global rule list where I can add rules that affect the entire system. For instance, I might want to add a rule that watches a DMX input port. And when it stops receiving a signal, I want it to automatically start a show. I'll add whenever DMX port 1 stops receiving data, then perform script, playback 5, Q21 Go. It really is just that easy. Now that you've seen the software, let's take a look at the hardware. I'm holding the CS940, the DINRAIL version of QServer 2. You can snap it onto DINRAIL for putting into DINRAIL enclosures, or you can attach optional mounting flanges on the side, which will allow you to surface mount it. Looking up close at the unit, you'll see that there's an array of removable terminal blocks that provide hardwire connections for power, four assignable DMX ports, two inputs and two outputs, eight contact closure inputs, two serial ports, and eight digital outputs for connecting to external devices. On the bottom edge are eight programmable function buttons, an SD card for storing your show data, a navigation switch for accessing the on-screen menus, Ethernet, USB, and audio in and out. QServer 2 is an immensely powerful lighting playback device. With its capability of handling projects from small to large, a great new programming environment, and its vast ability to connect to third-party devices, QServer 2 is the lighting controller you've been looking for. We hope you've enjoyed this quick overview. Please visit our website for more information. You can download QServer Studio 2 and play with it, and you can check out our online user's manual. Thanks for watching.